Welcome to the Face of the Future podcast. It's your boy Mills. It's your boy Shane. Oh, we on episode eighteen now. Yes, sir. This this episode we've been waiting for for a long, yeah, long time since we first started. This this one this one's good for us. It's, it's good for it's good for South Jersey. It's good no for doubt. you feel me. No doubt. Everybody everybody that knows our guest that we have on today. Uh huh. Um, we got a special guest on for all you guys that are listening right now. It's, it's a guy that we all grew up um, looking up to. I guess you could say mm-hmm. probably the first, first not even just the first black man, but the first man we see build his build his brand from the ground up. Something that our, our company um, lives by, goes by. Um, for all you don't know, it's our guy Cole Cuts, man. How you doing, Cole? I'm good, man. It's, it's, it's a long, t- long time, long time coming, baby. Good, man. Long time coming, man. <laughs> it's a long time coming. It's like. How you living though? Let's just before you get into everything. How you living? I'm before I even get to that. First of all, let me just say I'm proud of y'all, man. Like seriously, I'm, we appreciate I that. that. Um, appreciate it. You know, I, I knew y'all since y'all was you know a little younger in age. You know what I'm uh-huh. saying just to see y'all collectively stay together and think of something that you know come up with an idea and collectively just go forward as as homies and as boys. Then just come up with an idea together and just go forward with it. Man, I, I love it. So just let me get that out just to say I'm serious. I'm genuinely proud of y'all. You know what I'm saying? That means um, a lot. Well, yeah, we appreciate yeah, especially that. Especially coming from somebody like you, like, it means a lot. You know, I, I mean that. But um, I'm living, man. You know, life, yeah. life is good. I, I can't complain, you know. We all could complain, but I ain't going to do it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, who going to compare? Who going to gonna care when we complain anyway? Everybody got their problems, right? But nah, man. Life is grand, man. I, I, I literally ain't no point in me complaining, man. You know, I woke up today. I'm in a positive. I'm in a positive mind state as always. No doubt. No doubt. Well, man. So I'm, I'm here. We good. I'm blessed. I, I, I call. I call. What you've done, something that 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 goes hand in hand with our our slogan, which is from the ground up. I remember when when I first heard about you cutting in town in Shrewsbury, bro. My sister told me like you need to go to Cole. He cuts. He and I, and I hit you up one time, and you were like, I don't even know if you remember this. And you was like, I'll come to your garage and cut. I don't care. You need me to come to your house. You need to pull up. You feel me? I was probably like. Either a freshman, eighth grade, something like that. Uh, and my mom, my mom was like, "You gonna come to your garage?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "You serious about what he's doing?" This is before you had a shop, mm-hmm. before you had anything. And he was, he was. That, that was the first time I realized like that's someone who's really about what they're trying to do. Wow. And now to see that you cut at the NFL Combine, you cut, you cut, you cut for people in the Grammys. It's like mm-hmm. wow. it's crazy. Just when you think about when you think about like where you started to where you are now, like yeah. how did that journey come about? Like, where, what is the cold cut brand? Like, how did that start? Um, yeah, he took me back, man. Yeah, <laughs> I was in the early days of mobile. I was, I was doing mobile cuts then, just to, just because I wanted to just get it off. You know exactly. What I'm now yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm charging a pretty penny. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a pretty bill if somebody yeah. would come to them now. But mm-hmm. um, literally, just like y'all said, man, literally from the ground up. That's that like that slogan is like nothing. <clears throat> excuse me for for nobody to take for granted or for nobody to just think it's something cliche. Like from the ground up is literally something serious, man. It's yeah. like I remember being, I was at a young age, man, and, um, you know, I was always, a, I was a good kid, but when it came to being in school, I wasn't the best kid on, on paper. My grades were horrible. Yeah. You know, um, I remember one day my mom telling me, just having one of them serious, like, you're getting older, you have to figure some stuff out, conversations, and she was like, look, you don't do too well with authority, like, you probably gonna have to figure out some business aspect of your own because I know you ain't really going to be too good with just a regular job. Mm, yeah. I remember my mom telling me that I probably was like 14. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? And, um, so I literally look at, I literally can look, I'm 29 now, I literally can look back on my life now, man. That's a serious blessing, bro. Like, I, I discovered something that was a a, 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 a talent in me and um, I was able to somehow, some way, figure out how to live my life off of it and yeah. turn it into something else, you know? Like, this building we sitting in, man, um, me and my partner Rick, who's not here right now, uh, the salon that we run, this was a this was a video store when I was running. I used to ride my bike up here to come run mm-hmm. video games. Yeah. Like, I'm Pass the, the only, spot many times. This is yeah. this is the only black owned business on Kings Highway. That's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I don't take none of that for granted, man. Like just just dwelling on that, reminiscing on that, man. It's a it's a serious blessing, man. So it's literally from the ground up, it's just it's literally just Believing, believing in what you you feel as though you can do, and then proving it to yourself with your own actions, man. Like having that serious faith, and even going surpass that faith, because it's going to take you getting up and putting one foot in front of the other, and that's just life. That's mm-hmm. what many yeah. people, you know. So, yeah, man. So how how, how important yeah. was how important part did your mom play play into the growth of you as a man? Like she comes in out the shop all the time. You know, she's a staple <laughs> in the shop. Everybody knows right. your mom. She comes in <laughs> right. like oh no, can be cut. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She crazy, but. Um, my mom played a serious part, man. My mom, my, I mean, my parents in general, but my mom is just like, I have a very unique situation as, as far as like how I, how I grew up. Um, 
you know, being from Swedesboro, my family is from here. My dad is from between Paul's Brown, Swedesboro, New Jersey. Um, at a young age, my dad moved to the West Coast. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I did, I honestly did half of my growing up in New Jersey. And in the summers, I would spend my summers probably from the time I was like 11 until I started working like full time. I spent my summers in Phoenix, Arizona. Okay. A lot of people don't know that. Um, some people that know me closely do, but um, so I had a real unique situation when it came to my parents in general because I'm, I'm gonna just talk about my dad real quick before I even get to my mom. But um, when it came to the relationship with my father, it was like I'm I'm so grateful for that because that had the that had the formula to really go south. Mm, yeah. My dad could have figured out that he wanted to go west and never turn back and never look. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right, no doubt. And, and uh, that man literally raised me over the telephone. You know what I'm saying? Like my dad called me so much. Like, yeah. as soon as I would get in the house after school, the phone ring. I'm like, is, is he looking at me? You know what I'm <laughs> so, you know, what I'm so I, I can literally say that like that that played a part. You know what I'm saying? So you know, shout out to my dad. But when it came to like being in the household with my mom full time, um, she just knew what to do, man. Like. My mom was just literally one of them pillars, one of them legit definitions of a black mom. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and even when it comes to like hands on specifically, but what I do for a living, which is also rather unique that I'm gonna get to in a second. Um, my mom always used to want to be in the hair industry. My mom used to do that. If y'all look at that picture right there, that's my mom and yeah. my grandmother's hair okay. back in like '90. I probably was like months old when that picture was taken. Uh-huh. But um. Uh, my mother and my, and my dad used to cut hair as well. My mom and my dad actually went to hair school together. Uh, they okay. dropped out when my mom got pregnant. Oh, that's how they met. Oh, okay. But they was already together. They was already married. Okay. My mom did hair and my dad used to cut hair. They both worked the same full-time job. They worked at um, the same company together. They both was like, we, we both had to do this. Let's go to school for it. They um they had, uh the plan was to go on a, on a break when my mom and got pregnant with me. Yeah. They never went back. Mm. Eighteen years later, I went to hair school. Right, so like, right. Yeah. Can't pull circle, <laughs> right? Yep. But um, but the the role that my mom played, man, is I can't even put that in the word, bro. For for me and my older brother, it's just like they see us. They just like, oh, that's that's Kimmy's boys right there. It's just you you see her, man. Yeah. You see how hands on she is. She hands on all the time. Day, yeah. You know what I'm saying it's just. She's funny. She she's funny when she ain't trying to be funny. Yeah. When she's trying to be funny, I'm like, Mom, go sit down somewhere. But <laughs> definitely, definitely. Y'all love her. My, you yeah, know what I'm saying? She she stole her her way of being involved with my business. She she does my salon, my shop towels for my shampoo towel. Yeah. So she'll come in, pick up the towels for me. She'll come in, she'll clean the bathroom real quick. She keep a stock of toilet paper. If it's, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So she do all the right. the motherly duties like it's my house. She just does yeah. that my business as well, man. So. I mean, I, we we all gonna say that about our mothers, but I literally mean it when I couldn't I couldn't trade my mom for a better one, man. Like you can see, family. she brings like a certain energy to the yeah. shop when you yeah. put her on the gram. You know what I'm saying? Stuff yeah, like that. The people, like, she thinks she got followers on my gram. <laughs> right, 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 right. She like post this for my followers. Yeah, you ain't got no followers. Like, they my followers. They mm-hmm. just happen to be fine to you. You know what I'm saying? When you when you were climbing up the um, ladder, like once you started going to like hair school and stuff like that, to, to work on your craft, did right. you have like any? Specific like inspirations outside of your parents that that were in the industry that you try to model like the way you cut hair, the way you carried yourself as a barber, or like even not even maybe not in your industry, but outside of your industry, you're like I want my business model to be like this. I want I want to maneuver like this or or something like that. Um, I mean, I had uh, as far as the craft, like it was it was something that I just picked up one day and just was like I feel like I can do this, so I'm going to do it. Um, but. I would say I, I always draw inspiration from anywhere, man. Um, I draw a lot of inspiration from different music that I listen to, mm-hmm. uh, different different entrepreneurs and different businesses. Um, some of my closest friends, you know, some some ended up being other barbers that I met or styles that I met in the industry later on, you yeah. know. Um, I, but I literally can draw inspiration from anywhere. I'm, I'm inspired by what y'all doing right now, right. honestly, you know. But um, just as far as my come up, man, it's just... I can literally say it just was like the the mindset of just wanting wanting something so much. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like you can literally take something that you know you you find out that you're that you're good at. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's like finding out that you're good at playing ball when you're young. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We know ballers now that they ain't never go nowhere. They in their neighborhood somewhere. They still can ball with the best of them. But yeah. It was something in their mindset that they that just held them back. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That that goes with every type of craft that there is. You know, so it's just like that mindset of I know I can do this, so I'm going to do it. And you add that with drawing inspiration from just the world or what's around you and paying attention to it, you you gonna figure it out. That's definitely yeah. a fact. Yeah, no doubt. So my question to you is like, tell us about how like you've 
grown your skills from like when you started <clears throat> to like now because we've seen you evolve over the years yeah, just like dude yeah. just gets better and better and right. better yeah, you know what i'm saying even because right. it got come to a point before you even go into that go into that whole spiel about how you developed your craft it's like to the point where when you cut my hair i don't even need to look at the beard no more it's yeah. like it's like no you doubt. know you know what you bring to the right. to the we know what you bring to the table so right. it's like um hmm i would say the uh the main component of that again with, with anything is, is it comes back down to one thing and that's consistency um practice is when you get your reps off with mm -hmm. something like time and time again um like just just for example, and y'all y'all can correct me if I'm wrong. Y'all probably feel more comfortable doing y'all what's this y'all 18 episodes? Yeah, you know, they did on day one, right? Yeah, no doubt. Y'all yeah. get more reps, so get more, more, reps. more and more. You know what I'm saying? Imagine yeah. when y'all get to episode 50, 60, 70. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Y'all gonna be mm -hmm. geniuses in this. You know what I'm saying? Second just, nature, yeah. That's just that's just what happens over time. You know what I'm saying? You do something long enough, you you just keep honing that craft and honing that skill, man. And you gonna discover things through it that nobody else did. It's like it's. It's more than one, and, and, and you gonna have the respect. You gonna get the respect from others that's doing what you're doing. They're gonna respect the way that you're doing it, and that just goes to prove that there's more than one way to skin a cat. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm we all going to the same finish line, but we gonna all have our same path. Like we both starting here, we all ending there. All our paths is gonna, gonna be like way this, different, you know, no there. doubt. And that's just what it was, is. Was there ever was there ever a point in like your journey where you like thought about like is, is cutting hair for me? Like was there ever a point where you was like, or you just knew that's what you wanted to do? Um. It's a, it, it, I can literally say that it's a, it's a blessing that I, that I, from, from day one that I started this, that I was like, I feel as though I can make it work off of this, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Not everybody can say that, but I feel as though once I really got my feet wet, I was like, yeah, I, I can, I can do what I mm -hmm. want this right Definitely, you know definitely. What I'm saying? And you been doing it full fledged, bro. You know what I'm saying? Know, you one of the now, one of the best barbers I've seen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> By far the best barber in South Jersey, in my opinion. Wow. That, that's a fact. You know what I'm saying? That's everybody, fact. everybody around here knows who you are. You know what I'm saying? Not even just from our town, but locally. Right, right. You know, I know a bunch of dudes that cut your hair from all over Jersey. You know what I mean? And it's like I went, I went to a shop. I forget where it was at. And it was like, who do you know? Because it was, just, I think you were booked one day. You know how that goes. You, know what I'm saying, you, you got high clientele. You feel me? So I had to go get a quick cut. Cause I was oh, going you to. on me. <laughs> <laughs> See, <I'm> <laughs> yeah, you guys supposed to tell your barber that, but I'm here. I'm, I'm coming clean. You feel me? But I went one because I needed a cut real quick. Right. And um, he's like, "Who you your hair cut by?" No, I'm like, "Uh, Cole." He's like, "Oh, Cole cuts." Yeah. I'm trying to get like him. I'm trying to get work because he did walking. He's like, "I'm trying to get to the point where I'm booked all the time like him." Like he's heard about you. And it's like crazy. It's like we're in a whole different town, a whole different part of Jersey, right. and they know the Cole cuts brand. Right. Like it's. It's it's absurd. It's not absurd, but it's like mind boggling. Like I said, we seen I seen you from the from the jump till now. Right. And like being an entrepreneur, though, um, you know how social media is nowadays. Everybody thinks they can just go out and do it and don't want to put the work in. What right. what 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 do you have to say to somebody that wants to be their own boss? I guess you could say that's trying to maybe not follow the steps as a barber, but follow themselves as being their own business owner when it comes to putting in the work, not getting caught up in like the things of social media right. and, and the, the actual work that it has, that it takes to put in to be what you want to be. So what would I say to somebody that wants to be their own boss? Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, number one thing I say is uh, when you, when you in the, the realm or in the space of entrepreneurship um, or being your own boss for, you know what I'm saying, for that matter, um, number one thing that people, that people would like to say is, oh, you can make your own schedule. Like if you want to do this, you can do that. that that's all well and good. But at the same time, you got bills like everybody else. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, money yeah. Like to support. Mm -hmm. So it's like, people be like, oh, you can make your own schedule. You can do this and that. I make my own schedule, but I still have to work. Mm -hmm. I can't make my own schedule and say, I'm taking off with 10 days straight. Yeah. I'm going to be on the street somewhere. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so don't take the, the the power of being able to make your own schedule and and just like, you know what I'm saying? You, you still, it, it still requires labor. And a, yeah. a good amount of it. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Y'all see the hours I put in. Oh, yeah. 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 From morning till night. You know what I'm saying? On multiple days straight, you know? So don't just take advantage of it and be like, oh, I can do this just because I can. You know what I'm saying? You also have to have to remember what, what's, what's, what's reality. Mm -hmm. It's that accountability. Absolutely. It's accountability process. It's Absolutely. Like, and I feel like that's a, with our age nowadays, like our, say our generation, because we're a little younger, younger than yeah. you. It's like everybody thinks it's just like black and white when it comes to doing something like that when it's not. Cause there's like you said there's a lot of pitfalls that may happen when you're trying to build your brand when you're trying to come up when you're trying to become a staple like you are and people don't realize i think it's just going to happen overnight when it really doesn't 
doesn't happen like that. Right. How many how many years ago was it? When, like when you say you was fourteen when you started cutting. Um, I was yeah, I was about fifteen. Fifteen, so it's what been like almost like fifteen years almost since 15, you. I'll be so sure. it's crazy. Like yeah. you went from that. Like, people don't realize like. Even when you look at music, it takes people oh, quite a while to get on. Yeah. Even basketball players and stuff, you got to start from high school to get on working. It takes mm-hmm. 10 years, 15 years before you can get to the league. It's like you got to put in that work. If you don't put in that work, it's may not. It's not going to happen for right. you. And you got to stay consistent with it too. It's not just like you said, oh, one day I want to work. The right. other day I want to sit off and take off because I'm quote-unquote my own boss, but it doesn't work like right. that. So that's that's definitely something yeah. I feel like people can learn from. The, the knowledge you just gave off with that. Absolutely. but. Yeah, just seeing seeing that come up is something is something amazing. Mm-hmm. But let's 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 take it a different turn. Let's jump into a different conversation. Something okay. that we've been discussing a little bit. Um, yeah, go ahead, sit right there. Um, something we've been talking about um, the last few days. The Aaron Hernandez documentary. Shane, you want to detail it? Oh a little yeah. Bit so Aaron that? Hernandez was um, NFL player, star at Florida <clears throat> University of Florida, uh, national champion, um, great tight end for the for the Patriots when they had him and Gronk. It was like. How are you going to stop both of these dudes? I mean, you got two wide receivers out there playing tight end. Yeah, so, um, you know, the documentary about his life came out. You know, he um, killed somebody. Uh, his sister's, his wife's sister's fiance yeah. killed her, killed him, and um, went to jail for it. It was a huge story. It came out, he had maybe did another two murders. Yeah. Maybe he had did a couple more murders and stuff. He had gotten into a lot of trouble or so it had seemed reportedly. He was wild. Yeah, and um, <laughs> he he, ended, he ended up killing himself. He ended up hanging himself after he got convicted yeah. in 2017. So, did you watch the documentary? I did. What'd you think about it? Uh, I mean, just just as something to watch as a documentary, I feel as though it was a good one. It was it was a great watch. Um, as far as the content in it, uh, I I, I think they, if I'm not mistaken, I think they had one before. Yeah, there was yeah, one before. Yeah. yeah. But um, I'm not sure if, if everything that was in this one was in that one. Not, I mean, they didn't have like in the first one, his wife was in it, the sister yeah. was in it, some of the more like of the people that were reporting stories about him were in it. Not so much more in this one. This one was more like his personal family and, and friends yeah. kind of thing. Um, the for, like like I said, first of all, I think it was a great watch, so I, I enjoyed it. The the only thing I would say, the only quote unquote problem I would say I had with it. It it just seems like it's um <clears throat> it's always it's like the the cool thing to do with with certain stories now is to make sure they get out when when the person is dead. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like not to say that some of the things that were said weren't true or or they were true, but it's like um or or whether or not we believe them or we don't, mm-hmm. but they're really not here to confirm mm-hmm. or deny it. You know what I'm saying? But. You know, that's neither here nor there. Um, I mean, like, literally, what can they do at this point? Yeah. Right. Yeah. They, you know what I'm saying? You know. Because there were some inconsistencies with the story because the one guy that was talking that was with his dad, if you remember, yeah, was saying, saying they was best friends. He was a starting quarterback. That's what I'm and, you saying. know, people go on Twitter, do they research? Find out, dude didn't even touch the field with Hernandez and stuff like that. Yeah. Really? So that Yeah. yeah so that yeah. makes you question, like, dude, like, were you even telling the truth about this whole <laughs> I didn't thing? Know that. Yeah. You know what so I'm saying? Wait, he, he didn't. So he did play with one of them? I mean, he played with him, but he wasn't like, he said, that I was a quarterback, he was a tight end. Dude didn't even touch the field. You know what I'm saying? Y'all might have been cool friends or whatever the case may be, wow. but now that you already didn't lie about one thing, now everybody's going to question everything else that you said in the documentary. I didn't know that. Yeah, it was, it was crazy when you started talking about that. Yeah. I didn't know that part. But, uh, I'm that, and, that's, and that's what I'm saying. Like You don't know what to let, believe, let pretty Aaron much. Let Aaron Hernandez have been alive and still been in jail, and mm-hmm. this came out. If they didn't like physically go to get his side of it, like in that jail or whatever, I'm sure he would have got to some of his people or his lawyers and say, "Oh, what is he talking about? He didn't even play." Mm-hmm. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, what exactly, I'm saying. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So it's like, I I don't know. I don't know. Like, I like things that get people talking. Or right. Like 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 we are now, but I mean, that man's not here to get his side. Right. No you know? doubt. So. To me, I didn't really see the point of the whole documentary. Right. To yeah. me, that was right. my that was my whole thing. Right. So, first of all, the truth comes out that you were, that you weren't on the field, mm-hmm. yeah. whoever this guy was. Second of all, you weren't on the field, but now you want to let everybody know that y'all were in a secret. Right. Right. Like, right. Right. Which is so which now, is crazy. So now you ain't ball, and you and y'all was. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> It feels no, like someone's trying to get a money grab or something like that. Oh, right. That's, that's, that's like, exactly what it feels story. like. And another thing is like. There, there has to legally be some say that has to sign off and say, okay, that's all right. Y'all can put this in there. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, 
don't know. It's just a crazy know. story because like it you is. you see how the trials unfold and then you see the two sisters that are involved yeah. and how it's just yeah. their relationship is totally strained. Right. Right. And it's crazy when you when you saw all the evidence of the wife and she is like she wrote for Hernandez yeah. like through and through. It's she, like she wrote from the jump. Like yeah. but, but she was giving it to him on the like you feel me? She was giving it to yeah, him when he was on the call. Like, like, I always gotta clean up your messes. Yeah, you gotta, like, gotta, gotta, you're not hanging up on me. Like you need yeah. to like what do you mean? Like that type of It was, was a crazy story. But man. in front of everybody else, she was riding. It's mm-hmm. like Ride. That's like ride like to the wheels, yeah. literally to the wheels fell off. She I was mean, riding. She bro. was on camera, clearly taking the gun from the basement, taking it in the trash. Didn't get on the stand and say she ain't know what it was. You know, right. it's crazy. But my thing, my question I have based up for both of you guys, based off the documentary, is like the landscape of like mental health and like the whole CTE thing that was going on. And you know how how Antonio Brown's going crazy, yeah. and we see Delonte West and like just the landscape of sports, the pressure, yeah. and then but wow. more so with with the Aaron Hernandez like. The effects that CTE may have on someone's brain are just being not, not mentally stable mm. based on childhood trauma. Because we saw how um, him and his mother didn't have a really good relationship at, at all. all. Like, right. and we talked about how you and your mom, you had a great relationship. Yeah. That that helped shape who you were. Yeah. And like maybe how his relationship, lack of relationship with his mother and like his father dying may have took him off course. You feel me a little bit? What, of what, what are your thoughts about that? That um, his mental health is serious, man. Uh, what I, I mean, I, I, I gotta, I love that that mental health is in the forefront of like people taking it serious now. Um, but there's also like an underlying factor of it where people are just like relying on that being like the excuse for mm-hmm. some things. You know what I'm right. saying? That's nothing to play with. Yeah, it's nothing to play with at all. Because we all gotta protect the mental. You know what I'm saying? Like day in and day out. It's nothing to joke about. But as far as like them athletes, like, like we were just saying, like them athletes, like him, um, uh, AB Delonte, you was talking about Delonte West, like they, that's that's sad stories, man. It is. Um, it is. It's crazy to see it unfold. You like, know what we, I mean? like, no, no, no. You know what was really crazy, and that, that they touched on in that documentary, the the Junior Seau thing. Oh yeah, man, when, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Junior Seau was a happy guy. Yeah, happy he was. Guy. He was he loved was, in the league, loved by every, know, all the fans, in the like, league, yeah. by all his coaches, by all his teammates. That was devastating. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, when he first retired, wasn't he commentating for a little bit? Maybe? Yeah, I think he was yeah. for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. He did like some, maybe might have been yeah. like some guest appearances or something. Uh-huh. But I he mean, was a legend, a legend, like know, a living legend. He just seemed like a a, a, a happy going guy that didn't have too many issues, bro. That's, and, that's the crazy thing about it, and it's like you never know what somebody's you know, going like, through. Like I, I literally remember like hearing about that on, on Sports Center ESPN. I was like, him at all people? Yeah. Man. But I mean, you you never know, and, and I mean, those few stories obviously like I sincerely pray that you know what I'm saying nothing. Excuse me. No, you're good. Nothing crazy happens. You know what I'm saying goes down with AB. But um, you know, man, uh, AB man going through it. Really, but like, then then when it comes to sports, those few situations are like nothing to play with. You know At what all. I'm saying? So. It's obvious that these these guys are going through something yeah. like on these fields or on yeah. the courts or whatever. Yeah. So it's like, and as far, far as I know, I know like these these leagues they they have situations where these guys can go to people mm-hmm. and they can be taken care of or be seen. But maybe they they need to up the ante with with that department a little bit. I know? think I it's I, I think it's it's very sad to see anybody going through any kind of mental health. Um, like you said, I'm glad that guys. And a lot of guys are speaking out about it now because yeah. a lot of guys, you know, in that sports world, you know, in that in in those cultures, you're told, you know, man up, you know, ain't nothing yeah, wrong with you, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. That's you're going to be all right, get through it, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of guys have to deal with that social anxiety yeah. like Kevin Love was talking about, you know what I'm saying? He was afraid to leave his house, you know what I'm saying? Just playing in front of thousands of people all the time, everybody watching you, yeah. it's going to give you some sort of, you know, anxiety. Right. So I'm glad that a lot of players are being more open about it to show everybody that, it's all right to say that, you know, some I might have something that's wrong with me. Right. Yeah. Or you know what I'm saying? Be like, I need to talk to somebody about the way that I'm feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's that's an okay thing to do now. Right. Because who else said that? I think Odell said something about that, too. He said, like, at first the fame wasn't, like, bad, but now they, everybody treats him like a zoo animal. Yeah. Every time he walks out, wow. his cameras, yeah, he feels like People a zoo animal. People ask him to dance think about like when you, Yeah, think about when you go to uh, the zoo. Everybody's taking pictures of the lion or the, the gorilla. You feel me? So he felt like, like you said, when he steps out, people want him to dance. People want him to whatever, sign autographs, whatever it may be, and there's no privacy. Mm. I don't feel like doing that right now. Exactly. I want to be a reg- I mean, obviously you're not a regular person, quote unquote, based on your status, but like still you want to live a regular, I mean, move I'm around. Very, I mean, you know, of, of course, uh, the status of who you are in, yeah. this, in this generation and in this world and, you know, just in general. 
I guess you're not a regular person when you yeah. think of somebody like OBJ, but like at the same time, he has the right to want to be. Oh yeah, definitely, you know definitely, mm-hmm. definitely. So it's like you know, I guess that's like a lose lose situation because if he snaps out and says, oh, "I want to be regular today," then they're gonna say, "Oh, OBJ is an asshole because he don't want to exactly interact with yeah. fans." Yeah, so like, at that point, I guess you like, "Damn, you do, damn, you don't." You know? That's that's how it is, and especially um, I don't know if you saw the whole situation that happened at the national championship game. When he was like just congratulating the players, that's his alma mater. You feel me? And he right. was just dapping them up in the locker room, going crazy with them. Right. And and then all the like sports analysts were like, "OBJ always has to make everything about him." It's like, nah, he just did it. Y'all made they, it. They, 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 they drive their own narrative, no right, doubt. Right, they drive right. their own the narrative. Never followed him. He it's, was on the field, politicking with his with his old coaches, old and, coaches, and his, all that yeah. stuff, and his young boys from his alma mater. Like y'all didn't have to follow him with them cameras. It'd be like no different if you came to one of our events or something like that. You dapping us up, showing love because we yeah. we had success to do whatever. Right. It's right. the same thing. It's like right. you're not making it about you. Right. You're coming and to show support. Somebody had to post a picture saying, "Oh, Cole had to make their event." Yeah, it's right. like it's you like nah. That's I feel right. bad for OBJ. I feel bad for him in a sense of like. He's like one of the only guys, maybe the only guy in the NFL that has like an NBA player popularity because he's like worldwide known. Right. Yeah. You know, most football players might not be besides like your Tom Brady's and Peyton Manning. Because of that damn haircut. Yeah, yeah but he's like, like a super, super popular guy. <laughs> so whenever he does anything, anything small or big, it's going to be in the news because it's OBJ. Right. That's and right. people are always looking to tear OBJ down. Yeah. That's right. a, Since the whole thing with the silent eggs and all that kind of stuff. So I feel bad for him in that sense. Right. And not even not even to deter from the conversation, we'll jump back into it, but speaking of the OBJ haircut, do you ever get tired of like cutting the same cut over and over again? And like not mix it up? Um or it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. It depends on what the cut is. I will say it's a lot of it's a lot of trendy things that's going on now. Yeah. I can't wait till they're not too trendy anymore. Yeah. Like uh for instance, kind of a look like the OBJ look. Uh-huh. You know, just a lot of a lot of young cats, even younger than y'all, like these high school cats now, they just, um, I, I actually don't do a lot of them, so, uh-huh. but just in general, I can even get sick of seeing them, just like the, they just let the top go wild. Yeah, they do. It'll, it'll be like crazy mohawks, and crazy, yeah. you know what I'm saying, up top with the, they don't, they don't really care about the quality of fades no more, nothing yeah. like that, they just want the top. They just get the little whatever. side fade right and there. They want the sides, yeah. but they don't care about no transitions, like they want it to look as two tone as possible, mm-hmm. just like. Compared to a lot of barbers that I'm known to be with or that I always respect it, I'm still known as one of the younger ones, even though I'm getting older to y'all. Oh, mm, <laughs> so like, really? But mm. I always was known as like one of the younger ones, but I still came from or I was still was inspired from that era where <clears throat> quality fades and stuff mattered. You know what I'm saying? So it's like a lot of these young cats, they just they just want the top to look as wild as possible and they want the size to look as low as possible. Yeah. Uh-huh. They don't care about their transition. There's so that. many of them too, right. man. You see that cut yeah. everywhere. See, you know what I'm saying? See even, it in the league, even in the league now. You like, see it yeah, everywhere, see, man. They, I hate it. They got the, the nat, like, the, I, I call it the nappy it. top. That's I was telling my girl the other day, I'm so ready for that cut to go away. Uh, I hate it. So I still appreciate, I still appreciate doing a dark season with a nice wave pattern. Right. A solid ball feed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, that's just me, you know. That's a fact, but but back to the um the whole mental yeah. health um conversation. What do you think people can do if, if they see like a friend, family member? Oh, hold on, y'all gonna drink with me, man? I'm, I feel like I'm. Yeah, now nah, we gonna we gonna we oh, gonna, I yeah, 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 yeah. I have been. I'm sitting a I have been. Nah, 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 nah. But um, what do you what do you what do you think people can do to like support people that are maybe going through something? Um, you think people should like go in firsthand and just try to help resolve situations, or go get, or just encourage them to seek the proper help when it comes to something um, like that. When, when it comes to like helping somebody that you know needs that, that mental stability or that, that, that mental support. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like an oxymoron how I feel about that because you kind of got to like, you kind of got to like, uh, how can I say this? You kind of got to like let people know that you're willing to help them but still give them that distance. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, say if it was you, Ma, say if you can't even like, cool, like, I've been going through some stuff, this and that. So, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, I feel as though the best thing I can do is like, yo, Ma, like, sincerely, if you need me, yeah, I got you. Definitely. But then I could give you what I have to give you, but then it's like, then I just need to let you go ahead and do what you need to do for you. Mm-hmm. Right? That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's a fact. So, and um, honestly, like, as young black men, man, like, like, like you said earlier, and even just like coming up as a man, and, and even in sports or wherever, and just like with a father, it's always like, like don't cry, don't get emotional. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's we we need to understand that um, 
there's nothing wrong with with, with, with therapy or mm-hmm. being vulnerable. Yeah. Period. Being vulnerable. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it at all. Being emotional, but like, I mean, I, I feel as though everybody um, deals with emotions in a different way. Mm-hmm. Like me personally, people think that I'm not emotional because I don't. I it's not expressed all the time. Like something serious might go on with me, and like it, I can probably count on one hand in the past six seven years the times that i literally cried like mm-hmm. outside of just like crying from laughter you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. that don't mean i'm not emotional like if something serious happens you know or something that that might drive somebody else to literal tears i might just deal with that internally i mm-hmm. might just need to like consolidate myself and just be by myself and i just process it in that way you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying definitely the next person might boo hoo cry you know what i'm saying that doesn't mean i'm not at that level of emotion that's just not how it takes a lot for me to get. It take, might take more for me to get there. I don't mm-hmm. mean I'm not emotional, right? You know no what I'm doubt. Saying? But it just comes to the, the the point of um identifying how you deal with it. You know what I'm saying? And if you get to that point where you feel as though you need help, please go get it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that you can learn how to deal with it. Please. You know what I mean? Find a therapist or find somebody that you literally like. Just simply like expressing it or talking to somebody. Might that might be that might be the 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 ending of what some people need. Some people might need to go surpass that. You might just need a, a certain friend. Some sometimes mm-hmm. might not even be one of your closest friends. At you know all, what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. it might just be somebody you find can listen well. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's, that's sometimes all people need is somebody just to listen to what they what they got that's it going it. on. Mm-hmm. That's it. You don't need nobody to say anything bad. They just need you to sit there you and just listen. Just one event, bro. Just one event, real quick. I'm a hairstylist, man. I I, I got to keep myself intact when it comes to you know my my own spirit and my own. You know what I'm saying? Daily rituals of how I keep my positivity, you know what I'm saying, on the forefront. Because I come here, I start at 8 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to yeah. see 24 people today. I'm going to get 24 different personalities. I'm going to get 24 different stories. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I got to keep my own my own aura, you know what I'm saying, top notch. Because I'm the therapist. I'm the psychologist mm-hmm. to, to, to some people. You know what so I'm let saying? me ask you, just just based off that, do you find it like after like a, like a day, like you say, you're dealing with multiple people, multiple stories, do you find like after work you just got to just take a deep breath? All the time. Decompress like all the time. Uh, all the time. Yeah. All the time. And I get home. Um my 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 home is like my like my safe haven. That's literally like my I get home sometimes I don't turn no TVs on. Mm-hmm. I just I'm just in the dark. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No I just mellow Ain't out. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, that's my that's literally like I and I not I mean, you know, it, being a single man with no kids definitely helps. But mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. I go home for time. My, my area, my time of wanting to decompress is just like I be mm-hmm. in such a rush to just get there and just like relax and just like okay, I I got through it. You know, that personal time. time. Listen, I might have to light the incense, pour me a little bit of this, and mm-hmm. I just. <laughs> Yeah, no just, doubt. You know, just just debrief from everything from the day. That's it. And it's okay to do that. That's what people don't realize. You don't always got to be around people. You don't got to always be in the mix. You feel me? That's Sometimes it. like that's the best for you for your mental health. As we're talking yeah. about that, is just to be yeah. al- alone for a moment. Right. Take take your time away from everybody, especially mm-hmm. like a professional human. You see people every day, constantly right. on the move. So it's like it's good that you do that, and it's good that you said it's okay. Like you said, to show emotion. It's okay. It's okay to do all those things to to make sure you're okay with your daily activities. Um, just going forward, you know what I'm saying? Right. So I encourage people to meditate, man. Yeah. Just even if you if, even if you don't have just but a solid minute to yourself, sometimes just it might be in the car on the way home or or on the way to or from work. Just, yeah. If you can just like relax in silence for a minute and literally just like breathe and just like. Talk to yourself, like mm-hmm. talking to yourself ain't crazy. Like back in the day, people were like when you talking to yourself, like you wow. But you literally could just be like, yo, you got through the day. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Go ahead, and take a deep breath. You know what I'm saying? You did it. You know, facts. You gonna do it again tomorrow? You gonna get through it? Everything was well. Life is good. Appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Thank God for it, or whoever you might you know pray to, wherever yeah. your higher power is. Just have that moment of just like to yourself. That's that's important, man. And it's, Very. Once you, once you, back to consistency, mm-hmm. once you get to the level of doing that time by time, you know what I'm saying, so time after time rather, you, you, you going, you're going to notice you know, uh-huh. how, how vital it is, you know? That's good, man. Those, yeah. those, those are words that, that a lot of people can, can benefit from. Yeah. Um, while we were listening to that Face the Future song of the day, we got some crazy news that shocked everybody that's in here, that shocked the world. Um... Got the news that Kobe Bryant just died in a helicopter um, crash in California, or coming from Calabasas. 
and and everybody's in here is just shocked because that's that's a figure. He's a person that's a figure that's a staple in um all of our childhoods coming up. Like when, when you're in school, shooting that that paper ball into the into the trash can, what you yell? You yell Kobe, and it's like he's just a prominent figure. In and I'm pretty sure everybody in here is in here is childhood coming up. Just the, what he meant, to, not just the NBA, just, just yeah. being a black male in general. Yeah, and it's epitome of greatness, bro. It's like it's, before the it's last crazy. segment ended, I saw the alert come to my phone. You'll see it on the video. I just looked at it like, what? What does that even say? Yeah, I know I'm not. I can't be reading that right. You know what I'm saying? Not Kobe, yeah. somebody we all grew up watching and loving, especially him being from right over the bridge in Philly. You know what I'm saying? That one hits close to home for everybody. I'm at a loss for words. Yeah, me too, man. No, that just, it just hurt my spirit like badly. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what to say or feel, man. Like, it's just bro, like I'm done. My like what you say, icon, when, man, when, icon. icon. And like, what'd you say on somebody on on your live was like, look at look at Fox. Yeah, while we was talking, somebody somebody commented and said, yo, somebody commented and said, look at the news on Kobe. Then somebody right after that said, turn on Fox News. And I, you know, we was in mid conversation, so yeah. I mean, but as soon as we took a break, as soon as I exited, just like it got on there, somebody said, "Yo, Kobe died." I'm like, "Kobe who?" Don't even sound right. Yeah, don't even sound right. Don't even sound right. Come on, man. That hurts. And it's just like, I, like, yeah, like you said, man. That hurts. I swear, I swear this, this, this gotta be like you know what I'm saying. Like, it's, just, it's weird, this bro. Is not reality. It's not. And then just seeing a picture with his with his starting yeah, date, bro. Yeah. He was supposed to be in Philly last night, too, which just makes it even crazier. You know, he's supposed to be here last night when LeBron passed his record. This is like. It's just crazy, man. Kobe being Brian, like the fact that you just, like you just said to you, all just joking about the cut you had. Yeah. Those big yeah. Dog cuts. I just the, you yeah. Kobe, like. And it's like, bro. bro that one hurts, God, man. Wow. It's prayers, it's prayers to his family, prayers to everybody oh that's, that's And it was like crazy was because like Kobe was in a part of his life post basketball where he was doing starting to do so many more things. He won an Oscar. Yeah. You know, he started his own hedge fund. Yeah. He has detail on I'll ESPN. Children, man. He's coaching the Dar's AAU team. It's just like, oh man. Gosh, dog. Like, how would that happen right now? Like, it's sad, bro. It's just like like I said, I don't even know I don't even know what to It, don't, it doesn't seem real, think, bro. At all. Doesn't seem real. Like it's That's all I can even think about right now. Whatever y'all want to talk about, we're going we to continue with this. Y'all want to go with what we had planned? And it's on y'all. Um, you got like wow. we can we can talk. We can still go as planned, but like what I want to know, like what are y'all favorite most like notable memories from Kobe as a basketball player? Like what's like off the top? Of you, I know some emotional time. I was, like, um, to me, like, one of the things I loved about Kobe was just. He was just ferocious, you know what I'm saying? Ferocious on the court, a killer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The black mamba. You know what I mean? The trash talk with the skills. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just the just the total package of everything you want in a basketball player and as a, and as somebody that's going to be representing the NBA globally. Definitely. That's the one of the guys that you want to do it. So to hear that he he died at a young age of 42 years old, it doesn't even seem real. It does. It's crazy. Bro. And it's like when I think of Kobe, bro, cuz like we all we from this area, so it's like we grew up by watching AI, and it was like Kobe. I was a, I didn't like Kobe when I was coming up, but I respected yeah. his game. Yeah, you know no I doubt. I respected his game. You feel me? But it's like the reason we like him because like there's no way to stop. There was Kobe. no way to stop him. It's like how are you gonna stop? Any, any, I was, I was a hater like, too, but because like, he had that arrogant bro. swagger about yeah, him. Yeah, it's like, but he would go on the court and he would kill you. Kill you. Know you what bro. I mean? There was nothing you could do about it. I don't care if you hated his guts, you couldn't do nothing but respect him. You had to respect him. Like, yep. when, it, when it came to like, it was like a small time, especially like you said, if you was from his era, the area, I mean, it was either like, um, it was like AI was our guy, and it was yeah. like some people, like AI, being from Virginia, came to this area and then became like the Philly and metropolitan mm -hmm. area around Philly mm -hmm. guy. Yeah. But it was like Kobe's, some people felt like Kobe's supposed to be our guy because he's from here. Yeah, this yeah, is home. Yeah, this is yeah. where he's from. So it was like for a minute, even before LeBron came, it was kind of like one or the other. Like after Mike, yeah. before LeBron, Kobe was, was like, the guy. Some people kind of like, some people kind of like disrespect that Kobe in the middle era a little yeah, bit. But during yeah. that time, it was like Kobe or AI. I grew up an AI fanatic. Yeah, yeah, me like, too. Yeah, yeah. You couldn't do nothing but respect Kobe, man. You Facts. know what I'm saying? You. It hurts. It's sad, <laughs> it's bro. Yeah, it is. It's weird. It's like I don't know the like. 
obviously emotion is like you feel you feel sorry for his family. This is weird. Me? Yo. It's just a weird space to be in because it's like that's out of the blue. You don't expect to hear on a on a Sunday afternoon. Kobe Bryant dies in a, in a, in a helicopter crash. I don't even sound Something like that he's done millions of times. Just, he, he would take helicopter rides from his home to the games. Yeah, the Something time. he's done for years. And that's how he dies? It's just crazy. It wow. doesn't seem right. Like this, this, is, this is different. It is. Like and it's, not Kobe, man. Not Kobe. Like, not Kobe. Not Co- that's what I'm saying. Like you said, like... LeBron just passed him for, whatever, third all-time. Last night. Last and he's night. on the Lakers. On the Lakers. Right. This just makes it, it's crazy. It's weird, bro. It's, but it's like, I don't know. I don't even got, like I said, I don't got words. Like, I can't even crazy, put it and describe, like, the feelings yeah. that we're feeling right now. And it's like but, the, um, it's like, like you said during, like Maude said during break, it's like the irony of it all, like. All my life, when people ask me my name, like, well, your name is Kobe, or like, the, like Kobe Bryant, I got yeah. that all my life. Right, yeah. right. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I always have to correct people, like, it's not exactly spelled the same, but like, something I always say is like, it's not spelled the same, but that's how you remember me, then cool. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But so it's just like, you gotta give, you can't, like I, like I said, I, I'm sure people that played against Kobe probably hated his guts. Yeah. You can't do nothing but run that man's highlight reel and respect every, every yeah. everything he did, bro. It's like, and I mean, our friend Kendall is like a Kobe fanatic. Really? Yeah. Like, and that's coming from his dad, who was a Kobe fanatic. Yeah, he, who, he, who even named one of his sons Kobe. Kendall named his dog after Kobe. Yeah. It's so like, it's just I know he's no, going through it right now. Man. This is very different. Yeah. Man. And every time, every time we have a debate, like I debate Kendall all the time about like who's who's better, like Brown or Kobe. He'll fight to the death. To the no death. Matter, no matter what. Like, all Kobe fans will. Like, to the death. Like Kobe, he put some respect on Kobe's name. Mm-hmm. Like. I can't believe we having this convo. Right, yeah, it's, it's, it's like, right. You know, like, I don't know if y'all saw it. But this reminds me of um, I don't know if y'all watched uh, Angie Martinez' uh, hip hop show she had going yeah. on, on YouTube. She was interviewing Frank Montana, and during that interview is when they found out that Nip got killed. Mm. So this this is like very like kind That's, of nostalgic. Wow, you know what I'm saying? Like Sad. during her interview, like like made convo, somebody like behind the scenes was like, "Yo, Nipsey just got killed." And like Fresh had to like walk, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, like we that's the feeling like, right now, no doubt. It's like an eerie feeling, bro, because it's like it's just weird. Like you don't expect, yeah. you don't expect. Like how like are we having this combo? Like how is Kobe being Bryant dead, bro? How? I'm like mad. Not the being. I'm mad. Too, like I'm saying, it's like, and like you said, the the, eerie, mad, the eeriness man. of yesterday. I when don't know how to feel? Yeah, it's like it's like yeah. Why does stuff like this keep happening to people like in our culture, bro? Wow, man. That's how I feel. Like Kobe came into the league of what, 96? 96. Yeah. When we was just born. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So he was like kind of, like Kobe said, that, that in-between period between Jordan and LeBron, Kobe's the guy. Yeah. Kobe is the best player and, and of before, that generation. Like I said before, before um, like LeBron came in, like he was our MJ, bro. Mm-hmm. Think about it. He was our Mike. No doubt. Yo, and another thing is like, and y'all can probably attest to this and, and, and some other things, but like Kobe's that guy that's like, you have no choice but to want to find something wrong because he did everything right. And they pick little yeah, things because you, you have to. Like people, like when that situation happened in Colorado when he got the little charge or whatever, People that wasn't Kobe fans, I see one of the boys from the neighborhood. He, he went away hmm. walking by. Yeah. But um, people like was like, oh, yeah. Got one. Patrick's on him. Got one yeah. on Not perfect. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like because he, he did everything so right. It's like look at his career, man. Facts. He came in. Everybody knew he was great coming. If you look at it, if you go back, everybody knew he was great coming from high school or whatever. Uh-huh. Skip, and that was the time where they had the choice of going to college. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He skipped college. Yeah. And I'm, I'm the man. I'm going to the league. I'm going to the league. Ended up in the best market at that yeah. time. I like. Probably still to this day. Yeah. For two teams now. For two teams, yeah. You know what I'm saying? He ended up in Los Angeles, and he wasn't the man immediately. Shaq was. Even before, even before Shaq. I'm not even talking about Shaq. Because he, he came off the bench at first, didn't he? Yeah. So I'm saying, like, in his lane, in his position... That backcourt was Nick Van Nessel and Eddie George. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Eddie George, it, it was it was Nick Eddie Jones, Eddie and right? Shaq before yeah. it was Kobe and Shaq. Yeah. For that year or two, whatever it was. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When Shaq was came from Orlando. Mm-hmm. So then the Kobe and Shaq thing started. And it was like they went and started winning championship. It was the it was the Bulls, that era was done. 
the Spurs won like two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it was the Lakers. The, the Lakers. Lakers. Yeah. Three peated. Three peated. Three peated. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Back to back to back. It was right. Like, um, Phil Jackson had, then made his move in LA. And then yeah. it was a. He brought that triangle to LA and that Kobe and Shaq took over the league. You know what I'm saying? Nobody they nobody could stop him. That's nah. it. When that was done, what did people say? Oh, he can't win one without Shaq. Took him a year or two to, to, to reconstruct yeah. the team. What he do? He won two, two without two Shaq. Back to back. Back to back. back to Almost back. won the third one. Back, yeah. Almost back won. to back without Shaq. So it was like he Kobe was perfect. Yeah, Kobe the man. He was close to winning three. Well, that, the, the Celtics ain't beat him. He, was going, he would have had back to back to back. Listen, it was like, come on, man. The only, yeah. only other perfect multiple champion winner they had was Jordan. Yeah. And like it was like the thing with Jordan was when his dad passed away. You know what I'm saying? Then it was like the thing with with uh with Kobe was like the cheating scandal yeah. and all that. And man was like when it came to stepping on that court he was perfect. Yeah it was a killer man. You couldn't do nothing with him. That's why couldn't do not with him. I mean it, the, why is he the post a child of envy? That's why people hated him man. Yeah. So it was like his last game, he had sixty. Kobe had that. Right. You know, his last game, he had right. put up sixty. He on was him. an old head. Yeah. <laughs> Forty some years old. Snoop was there. Jay Z was there. Everybody was sixty there. for no reason. Listen, and he kind of BS through that season. Like yeah. I'm just going on this mm-hmm. farewell award, tour. Award, right. Farewell yeah. award tour. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is my last game. Yeah. Watch me put up sixty on. Yeah. Let me let y'all know. I'm still Kobe. Right. 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 Wow, man. Yeah. I can't believe this, dog. Yeah. I really can't believe it. It's a shock, bro. To everybody, like God bless that man. This yeah, family, seriously. Dude. He's got a young daughters too, man. Yeah, he just had he just had a I'm young a daughter. He just it, had man. like a newborn child, I think too. Wow, I'm dumbfounded. And it's and it's crazy. I don't it's know. So All I can say is it's crazy. Like, let me see who in here, man. It kind of that. Listen, man, I'm, I'm with whatever y'all want to talk about, man. I know that that switched up the vibe of the day. Uh, yeah, man. my train of my train of thought off because just because of the whole yeah, situation. You was right when you All said, the way, you man. was right when you said Kobe was like, "Oh, that was our MJ growing up." You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, it was. And like, for him, like seeing like him and LeBron being in the league at the same time, that's what LeBron was chasing. You know what I'm saying? That level of greatness is what LeBron was chasing, and it's just crazy, man. Like how, man? I. I I'm at a lot. I'm literally on one of the reasons that they're lost. Yeah. Like, all I can do is reflect, like, on the moment. Let's go. Let's let's jump into, um, let's just jump into, like, music a little bit. Because that'll, 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 change, that'll change the mood a little bit of what. It did change the mood all the way, man. Yeah, because just thinking about that situation is just. That's we can talk about more about that off air. But, um, music plays a big part in the shop like the with the vibe you feel me you see in the shop when you're cutting hair right. um i just want to know like when, when, when does it depend like who's in the shop what type of music you play or like how do you set the mood for the shop for your day like when you're going to like or who's your go-to artist i know you like to play a lot of jay in the in the in the in the, in the, mm-hmm. in the, in the shop but like who else do you like listen to i don't know the vibes yeah mm-hmm. oh but um i i it definitely depends on who's in here uh but you know i just like the I like a vibe that keeps me um, feeling creative, uh-huh. you know? Um, I definitely cater to who's in here. I get in moments where I, w- I want to hear something a little a little uh, ratchet, a little gutter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lyrically, um, you know, sometimes I might have a, a elderly mom in here with a kid or something like that. And, you know, some days throughout the week, it's the men and, it's the men and women in here. Uh-huh. Sometimes women don't always want to hear what we listen to. Sometimes we don't want to hear what we listen to. So, um, I let the women control the music a lot of times when we all in here, like Rick or Whitney and put something on, uh-huh. you know, I, I, I respect their playlist as well and they'll always be alive. Definitely. But, um, like, y'all heard what I play, was playing today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I always love coming in shop because, you know, I, my favorite rapper is Jay-Z and so was yours, so. <laughs> right. That was always something, that was a good vibe and I like right. the Jay-Z and the Nas and stuff. That was That's always it. my That's favorite. It. That's it. You know what I mean? So, you know, if I'm, if you catch me somewhere and I'm in a whole bag, Oh yeah, you be staying that bag. You, my, thing is, my thing is, my thing is, that bag. I, yeah. I look forward to when Jay playing because I know the cut gonna be OD. I remember, <laughs> I remember one time being in the shop, Cole, when he was at the other spot. Yo, everybody. I'm that. in a chair, man. Dead presidents come on. You rap the whole time. <laughs> I rapped the whole damn president. I was like, yeah. You know, you know he gonna be this bag. Yeah. Like, bag the line gonna be super. Yeah. Crazy, you know? It'll be the watch gonna be so Cause, serious. Because when, when you can tell when one of your songs come on, you you get in your bag. You can tell. Yeah, you know what I mean? But it's like um. Everybody don't, well, people that know me know this, but, like, some people forget is that I'm also a musician as well. Right, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it was, like, even before I ever picked up a clipper, like, music is my heart, man. Uh-huh, I fact. just, I... Talk I, about that a little bit. Uh, we, we can talk about that a lot of bit, mm-hmm. yeah, but it's, yeah, like, yeah. I, 
I um I add music into the equation of everything. You know what uh-huh. I'm saying? Facts, like facts, facts. you know, like like we were just talking about I got my moments of where I want silence, but I got my music I got my moments of where I want the perfect sound check. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that happens a lot in the shop. And you just just for me being super inspired by hip hop, my favorite lyricist happens of of all time happens to be Jay Z, you know what I'm saying? I got a lot of favorites, but you know, Ove is just that pinnacle for me. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like that moment you said I was cutting you out there, President was yeah. the like, moment. Like I remember um a little over a month ago, Jay Z birthday just passed. My man, um my man Dex. Dex was in my live earlier. I don't know if he's still in. Dex Fowler? Yeah. My man. <laughs> yeah, Dex, my man. Crazy. You know, Dex Wild. Mm-hmm. So um you come in on Friday. I cut Dex every Friday night. You come here on Friday night. Yeah, yeah. Me and Dex and whoever else in here, we live. We might have a bottle with this. I saw last yeah. last Friday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Dex is an EK man. You know exactly. how Dex is. Exactly. But um Dex had tweeted something. He was like, damn, I forgot today was Jay Z birthday. I should have went on my cut. He's like, cool. <laughs> like, what Hell you yeah. That's what Yo, I'm literally, like, I played, like, I went from reasonable doubt to volume one to volume two to volume three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To the dynasty, to the blueprint, to the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I just was going went through, through the whole that, jump. And that's my vibe. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Facts, but facts. I, so I got them times. I, you might come in some time, I might play some guys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so mm-hmm. it was like, I'll get in that. I got like y'all heard me today. I, I might have got a a playlist on go of a, a bunch of vibey ass R and B artists yeah. nobody really heard of. Yeah, so, so it's yeah. like, and that's always the, the best vibe to me. Best vibe, mine's yeah. the R and B vibe. Yeah, the R and B vibes, man. Me, man. Like when Amber Mark came on, I'm like, yeah, this right. is this is exactly what I'm looking for. This right. kind of vibe right here. Put you yeah, in yeah. a certain yeah. mood, like yeah, it's time. that Every feel time. good music. It's so much, and people like and, and getting into the the um the aspects of you know R and B or whatever. A lot of people like to say a oh, real R and B it don't, don't exist no more. Nah, this and that. Right. Um, our pure the pure essence of R and B maybe may not work on the radio right yeah. now. Yeah, mm-hmm. that don't mean it's not out here. It's out there for if sure. You really do your research. It's out there. Involved with these artists and even some independent artists, some indie artists that's doing their thing, man. So so let me ask it's you off that, like coming up in the nineties, that was a different R and V vibe than it is now. Big time. How have you seen what's the transition been like from like what was going on then? Because it was a lot of like bands back then, you know what I'm saying? 112 Boys and Men did the whole nine. Dance, girls, to like right. now, how how have you seen that change? Um, and do do you like the change? I do, I do because I um I appreciate the creativity. So I I noticed the new creativity. It's like um. No, that's crazy, bro. Bro, Kobe's girls passed away too. Oh, his fucking daughters? I I gotta see. I gotta do good clarification and get the verification on that. But that's ridiculous, bro. Damn. Ah, uh, I don't even want to see no more. Yeah. What was you asking me, man? Well, I didn't mean to mess the mood about like it, bro. That's crazy, bro. Um, you asked me about the change. Dude. Yeah, the change from like R&B from the '90s to what it uh, is now. Uh, anyway, I don't even want to think about that right now, I man. Even though I can't stop, but yeah. anyway, um, damn. Um, it was just crazy. Yeah, it is. That's ridiculous, but, um, bro. The transition's been crazy. The, the type of music, that type of thing, bro. I know, I know you're trying to hold it in. But oh my gosh, man. Um, ah, uh, damn. I'm sorry. Seriously. Um, today, back to today's time of uh, music and R and B or whatever. Um. Man, excuse me, man. This is, this is crazy, dog. I hope that's not true either, bro. Um, all right, get it together, cool. All right, anyway, um, back to what we was talking about, getting it to uh, today's R&B we was talking about, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I, I appreciate the, um, I can appreciate the new creativity of today, you know what I'm saying? Cause I, just like everything else, we in 2020 now. Things just want to change. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just look at where technology is at. Look where social media is at. Just look at where everything is at, you know, in this day and age. So it's like, you can't expect even music to say the same. You literally got to sometimes just go ahead and play them, them, them records or that era that you appreciate mm-hmm. and just tap back into that vibe. Nothing like that 90s. That 90s vibe it's, is you're just right, different, you're right, bro. You're right. It's nothing like it. Mm-hmm. But the same way that it's nothing like that, it's also nothing like what these kids is going to do now. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So. Um, Who's your favorite R&B artist right now? 
If you had to pick, uh, give me give me five. Give me top five today. If you say, yo, I gotta I gotta listen to this today. I need I need five artists to listen to for the whole day. R and B, who would it be? Five R and B artists for today. Um, damn. Um, <laughs> this is hard. This is it is hard. hard. It's, it's a, a lot, lot of talented music, people. Yeah, I know. Uh, I don't even know where to start. Um, I like her. Yeah. Um, you know, and she um, has great vocals. Big time, man. Um, close friend of mine is one of her main producers too, and a client of mine. So you know, um. I really enjoy what what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, me and you talk about a lot. I'm a fan of Snow Allegra. Yeah, Snow Allegra. I love Snow yeah. Allegra. Yeah. Yeah. Snow, Snow Allegra. Allegra. Um, yeah. A couple months ago in New York, man. Awesome show. Mm-hmm. That's great. Uh, y'all like Lucky Day? Yeah, mm-hmm. Lucky, Lucky Day. Lucky, Lucky smooth. Lucky very smooth. Very smooth. Um, y'all hit the Vic- Victoria Monet? Nah, I'm mm-hmm. not hit the Victoria Monet. No. Monet, I'm not. She's fire. You fire! I'll put y'all on to that. You you listen to um? I'm real big on Brent Fires. You, you you listen to him? I like Brent. I like I don't listen to him as much as I probably should, but he got some good moments though. Yeah. Um, I should get into his catalog like more Brent, than that. And it's, I think he got a new project coming this this month coming up in February. Really? I think so. Yeah. But okay, Brent. Lock in on that. But yeah, that was all the people you named are, are about to are like if people don't know them. They should yeah. be listening to them. Yeah. Yeah. One Absolutely. of my favorite guys listen to is Daniel Caesar. You oh, know, course, love course. is vibe. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Love is vibe. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a good one. Um, but I feel like you said R and B though. It's literally a lot. It's, it's, a, it's so many. People don't think it's a lot, but then it's like you throw a lot of these names at them, but then they look at all these catalogs. They're like, wow, it is a lot. Yes, yeah, a lot of hits. Really mm-hmm. them, you know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, it's a lot that goes on, man. Uh, it's a it's an artist y'all should listen to. I don't know if y'all know about it yet. Named uh, 070 Shake. Oh, yeah, 070 Shake, yeah, from Jersey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Her, new, her, new, her new project? Yes. Boy. Yes. She, um, she's tough. She's tough. Yeah. That's Jersey. Another Jersey artist, Absolutely, you feel me? man. But you know, I got some um, I got some friends that's tied into the music industry that all got some dope projects out, man. You know what I'm saying? Or I can just put y'all on some, put y'all on some people that I really yeah. know. You know what I'm saying? If y'all don't, if y'all haven't heard, um, y'all probably know of my man Charlie Heat. He yeah. put out a mm-hmm. compilation. Uh, he's a producer, but he put out a great compilation out a couple months ago with some of the illest artists, some you know, some you yeah. maybe need to get hip to as far as like vocalists and rappers. It's, it's, yeah. it's fire. Um, so music definitely plays a big part in the shop, you say. No time, doubt. Time, without question. Time. Just because of who I am. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And and uh like I said, the girl as well is my partner Rick. I know Miss Ricky yeah. being here getting yeah, it too. She, yeah. She she has a great musical ear as well, you know what I'm saying? So um, no matter who who's running the music. We, we we listen to it's always music. a vibe in here. Yeah. Um, who else was I going to name? Um, some close friends of mine, friends of mine from the DC area, two sisters. But they have they have a group named the Morris. Okay, okay. So tapping it in, man. P- promise you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I promise you. You know what I'm saying? I hold them near dear to my heart. Man. Yeah. They it. Yeah. They no doubt. Man. No doubt. I know y'all fans of some legit yeah, yeah. feral R and B uh-huh. music, and that's that's it right there. Um. It's a lot, man. Facts. Uh, can, can we can we talk about like I know I know cutting's your thing. Yeah. You feel me? Cutting hair, like you said, music's playing a big part. Yeah. Um, after like cut, well, well, being a well, being a barber, I feel like you can you can expand your brand as much as you can. But do you feel like <clears throat> you would look forward to expanding your brand in other avenues, like going into the music industry, since you're such you have a lot of ties in the music. Music's been like was probably one of your first loves, like you stated before. Yeah. Would you ever feel like venturing out and doing something within the music industry, like to expand the Cold Cuts brand, or like how would you? Well, have you ever thought about something like that? I would love to, um, simply because I don't. I mean, honestly, I mean, y'all y'all know me a little personal. Y'all, I mean, y'all know other things that I'm into besides yeah. just cutting hair. I feel as though I'm bored as a barber. Yeah, mm-hmm. and music is a, a big part of my life. Um, so I mean I don't know exactly what, but if somehow some way I can get involved in like the musical side, the, the business side of music, yeah. hands down I would love it. You know, um, just the arts in general. Yeah. I just love man. You're an artist. You are. You are artist. You are, yeah. people, you are artist. I consider myself an artist. I'm. I, I'm. I'm into the literal arts as far as like, as far as like canvases and paintings are concerned. Mm-hmm. But. The, I mean, as far as like any avenue of art, the musical arts, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Just the, 
I, I link with anybody that just in the mindset of creation. You know yeah. what I'm saying? What y'all doing is art. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I literally I was I was watching um not too long ago, uh it was a um I don't know if y'all ever listened to uh I can't why why the why the name just go back in my head, but um Jerry Lorenzo was a don't know Jerry Lorenzo yeah, was yeah, a fair guy. Yeah, um, fair guy, yeah, yeah. Fashion um, the CEO and the founder of that, he was uh, he was a guest host on um a youth night of a church in in, in Carolina at um why can't I think of this pastor's name? I watch him all the time. But anyway, they have a youth night that he that Jerry Lorenzo was a, a guest host on, uh-huh. and they was asking him just about being a creative, and um he literally said like what he said like spoke volumes to me. He said um he said yeah y'all might look at me as a creative, but like creativity goes into everything he said man i remember he said he remember being young and and his mom had to figure out how to so pay all the bills off of yeah. her one income mm-hmm. yeah she had to be creative to figure out how to make it all yeah. work you know what i'm exactly. saying so it was like just that mindset of being able to do a lot with a little that's creativity you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying so it was like 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 what y'all doing this is this is an art you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying this is an avenue y'all 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 figure out Y'all want to be a guest, y'all figure out what y'all want to discuss, yeah. y'all figure out the format of it. That's an art, man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's like that mindset of creativity goes into everything. You know what I'm saying? So it's like just taking something, being inspired, and just filling out your own lane of making it happen. You know what I'm saying? And you know, that's that's what everything comes back to. Mm-hmm. And, and I gotta ask you, um, so, you know, this is a big debate that goes on. <laughs> this should and, be a good, and, this and, be a good question the, for you. In the, in the music industry, um, Kendrick or Cole? I, I, I got to hear it from you because I'm saying, you know, we lyrically have, better because they're both not li- even just, lyrically, they're both fire. I, okay, well, as, as an artist, as an artist, o- overall, and all the creative avenues, I'm gonna say, as a, I'm gonna say more so as an artist in, in general, like all around, as far as like handling the business side of artistry yeah. and the, the technical side of it, yeah, they might be hand in hand, they might be equal. Mm-hmm. Okay, when it comes to being lyrical, yeah. Kendrick. Okay. I know Money Tree is one of your favorite songs. That's one of mine too. <laughs> when that joint come on, I can't. I just yeah, don't have to skip past it. that song. There's no way. J Rock. Yeah, it is, <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy on that. But no, but no, it's like it's like um, I appreciate both of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they work hand in hand. Like you play a specific cold record. Followed by specific cold um, Kendrick record. Yeah. It's like, damn, like this is an awesome playlist right here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you break down both of them, like lyrically, sometimes I'll be like, oh, you got to be on a different level listening to Cole. I don't think so. Nah. Because Cole is kind of like dumbed down. Like his. It is. Like, I'm not saying he's not lyrical, but it's like what he's talking about is kind of like, it's very relatable. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He. And that's a skill in itself. That's why he's successful. Kendrick might can't rap in that relatable lane like that. You know what I'm saying? Kendrick, sometimes Kendrick, I feel like. Like Cole, like you said, says dumbed down. He puts it in simple terms to make everybody understand. Right, Kendrick, right. He'll that's why he's some, successful. So he'll, Kendrick will say some stuff that's like you, to you gotta think about a minute it. to you understand. Gotta, yeah. so you gotta, so you gotta appreciate both of them. Right, exactly. one or one do the other. Exactly. But it's like they for ones that that like ones of the culture that's really waiting on that project from both of them together. It's Seriously. Like, because we know how for much minute, waiting for years <laughs> now. Yo, you remember years. Like, what was that, like two, three years ago during Black, they, they dropped them two freestyles. The Black Friday Yes. Yes. What was what? that? What beach was that? The um, the All Right John by what? Kendrick and um, what was the other one? What I forgot. I'm not gonna hold you. I forgot about that. But that's no. yeah. I remember no. now. That's no. that's now. It's about a Tale of Two Cities. Yeah, and, uh, Tale of Two Cities. And, yeah, um, crazy that yeah, that was like yeah. When they like switched, it was yeah. That was yeah. one was crazy. Got them together. Yeah, yeah. 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 And that kind of got people talking like, oh, they, the project coming. Then they they kind of just sat back and laughed. Yeah, like, I feel I feel like it I is gonna it. come eventually, but. They gonna write. They waiting for the right climate to drop that joint. I mean, to me, just just oh, well, just right lyrically, climate? they're crazy. You're right. What's you're, the right climate though? You're right. I feel like whenever they do it, it's gonna be it's, it's gonna, gonna do numbers. Great. It's gonna do numbers. But I feel like I, I want that right when they drop that that two that two pack. I guess you want to call it the two songs. Like they, I feel like they would have dropped it right after the streets would have been crazy. Like crazy. I said, just 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 if we're just going based just off lyrically, they're like miles ahead of so many other guys. Yeah. That that right. can't even get on that can't can't even put those words and those metaphors together like that. So when it, so just to just to like put y'all my answer to y'all question in, you know what I'm saying, like legit terms, when it comes to a level of impact, I'll say the equal. Yeah. If you asking me who I feel as though they both lyrical, but you asking yeah. me who 
who I consider lyrical more than the other. If I if I say Kendrick is one, I'll give Cole one A. Yeah. You know okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that makes sense. That. that makes sense. Cole is more relatable, so it's like if I can rap, if I was able to like literally rap. Mm-hmm. I feel as though it'd be easier to rap like Cole. Yeah. And that's not taking up from him. Mm-hmm. He just raps more relatable to where it's like, damn, I'd have been there before. Yeah. You know what I mean? Facts, mm-hmm. facts, Kendrick facts. spit some stuff to where you like, I gotta go think about this. Yeah, it's for the culture. Yeah, you know what I mean? Right, right. So that and I I mean, just my opinion, that might take just a that might just be a ounce a little bit more of top tier. Mm-hmm. But again, it's not taking nothing from cool. Now I got a question for y'all. Okay. 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 Piggybacking off of that. Okay. Right? Okay. Piggybacking off of that. Okay. Now y'all, y'all asking me who, who I prefer out of Kendrick or Cole. Let's go to the cruise. Y'all going with TDE right now or or um. Or uh, Dreamville. Dreamville. I'm going with Dreamville. Yeah, Dreamville. Yeah. I'm yeah. going based on the fact that the, the, their um their album was fire. Not, not even just the album, but the the, the, the T D don't have one yet. That's what I'm saying. T D don't have one yet, and I that's why I put Dreamville above them because okay. they put a body of work together with all their whole camp together. One, and then like I said, once I once I realized the hey, the way that um. Cole did their whole album that like they had that whole Dreamville camp where they invited everybody. That whole cre- creative process of putting it together, the watching the documentary, yeah. Yeah. it made me feel it made yeah. me feel different, bro. And it's like they got people in a camp that people don't even realize are stars yet. You feel me? Yo. And it's like it's ridiculous. And I feel like they have a wide variety. I love their name artists. too. Dreamville is a dope name. It's like it is. And, and Cole don't Cole Cole is hard on them in a way that like he knows their capabilities. So he's like he doesn't understand like you need to meet this every time. Mm-hmm. Bro. It's like. Setting you know the standard what? for him. Exactly. I don't. I think. I think right now, as far as squad goes, I might go with Dreamville too. Yeah. And um, and I'll probably will go with them first. It literally goes to like head to head matchups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you go from the from the from the top tier and just okay, cool. First Kendrick, boom. They both got their their female R and B sensations. Yeah. You got Ari on one side. You got SZA on one Who side. Who you taking between Ari and SZA? I don't even want to. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I would. I got. I gotta know. Taking? I gotta know who you going to. I love them both. I love them both. I okay. Will, I will. I will literally sign a petition for both of them to ruin my life. <laughs> I ain't gonna hold you though. No doubt. Scissors. Scissors project was re- like was od. It was price but, right now. Yeah, it but, went hard. It but because they both one project in, so I might. But Ari's joint. I felt like it hit the culture different though. Like the concept. I, I the concept. The sequencing behind everything was like. I don't know. I just I think I like Ari just a little bit better. That's just me. I feel like That's I feel me. like I feel like Ari in general is hitting the culture better. Yeah. I feel like album for album, I feel like Sis's album hit the culture better. Okay. Okay. I feel like Ari as that. a person tied with her album, yeah. the culture is loving more right now. I agree with it. But if we're going with, with control versus um I forget the name of Ari's album right now. Coco Butter Baby, something like that. I forget what is it? The was it? The, the, was, I forget what so we're going with Sis's first album versus uh, first official album versus Ari's first joint. I'll probably pick scissors. Like yeah. overall. And I love Ari's joint too. But I feel as though overall, um Ari's probably probably Shea really, Butter Baby, that's the name of the project. That's been serious. Okay, yeah. so Shea Butter Baby is the name of the album. That song is so yeah, fire. Shea Baby. It's the song. <laughs> that song is so I, I fire. I that was a single I flat out. Yeah, that's the name. Okay, yeah. cool. So Shea Butter Baby versus Control. So yeah. So if I'm if I'm going with in general, I think Ari's winning as far as like just People appreciating her like yeah. as Ari Lennox, not just the album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, along with the album, though, you know what I'm saying? Like just in general, I think she's she's winning. But as far as like Shea Buddy Baby versus Control, I'll probably go with Control. Control. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. But, that makes um, sense. So yeah, but uh, I got one more question for you about the music up? industry. So, oh, can I say something real quick? Yeah, yeah of course. Right. As far as just just to finish up with <laughs> you got to finish the yeah, TD is for Dreamville, yeah, versus Dreamville thing. I think the one reason why Dreamville might be a little bit ahead right now is because TDE don't got nothing to match up with. Um, What's their name? Uh, I know you're talking about, uh, too. Uh, 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 <laughs> I got to look at my phone. I know you're talking about. I got to look it up. I know you're talking about. I'm about to look it up real quick. They, they, I know they you're talking outcast. about, too. I just can't. Yeah, they're around you. I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, um, I'm drawing a blank just like you. It's this douce, dog. Why can't I think of it? <laughs> Boy, uh, this song, guys. Look at the damn. My fault. I don't even remember. I can't. Why can I see it? Me too. I don't know. But I know you're talking about. Yeah, we know you're talking about. It'll come to our. It'll come to yeah. my head. Um, it's gonna come to Earth Gang. Earth Gang. Yeah, yeah, Earth Gang. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Earth Gang. But they. That's what I'm saying. Like they, Earth Gang. They not even. A lot of people don't even know about Earth Gang like that yet. And there's a there's a pocket that knows about Earth Gang, but yeah, like yeah, people yeah. don't know about Earth Gang. I feel. I feel as like. I feel like. 
that's that's uh Dreamville's slight edge over T D right now. Yep. But go ahead. I with agree. Jay Z best rapper of all time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's all. That's well, all. What was that? You said Jay Z the best rapper of all time. Yep. Remember what we said? <laughs> he don't said, "Yep." Me, don't talk me, about that. Me, no, me, I agree. No, 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 no. Because I can break down why I think. That's that. my I, I, I remember why you told me. Maybe you could do it for the listeners, like why they think, why you think Jay Z is the best rapper all the time. But I also want you to go into the artist you think is gonna mirror Jay Z when it comes. to Remember how we talked about Kendrick's album is gonna go tick for tack and be classics ten like ten years from now when you look back on it okay. how he may stand up to, he not be better than right. but stand there like tick for tack with like right. album for album right. and the impact that they have you want to go into the, in, in a little okay. bit about that? about that yeah let's talk about that a little bit all right cool so me and Miles talk about this when I was cutting one day so I legit not just me being biased because Jay Z's my favorite rapper I based the greatest rappers off their collection their their catalogs their bodies of work mm-hmm. album for album. I almost believe this opinion so strong to be fact for what I'm about to say. Okay. Can't nobody go album for album with Jay-Z. <laughs> I nobody. thought we disagree with you. Nobody. Like, can somebody rap as good as Jay-Z? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can anybody go album for album with Jay-Z? No. You're talking about the, the total collection of the album. You can't you can't put head to head album with Jay-Z with nobody, bro. Like. There might be a Jay Z album that you don't listen to as much as another, mm, but you, yeah. I don't feel as though nobody can say he has a whack album. Nah, that, nah, that, nah, nah, he doesn't, he have, he doesn't have a whack album. He doesn't like, have a whack album. For me, a Jay Z album that I don't listen to as much as others is Volume Three. I've been listening to it more recently. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that don't mean I, like Volume Three is hot, but I just don't like. I, not, I don't even want to say I don't like it. I just it was more that I like more than I like that. Mm. That don't mean that it was ass or at all. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But it's just when you when you talking about somebody that got ten plus fire albums, there's going to be something at the bottom, yeah, right. and that's one that's probably in the bottom five for me. That don't mean it was ass, but and I actually listen to it now. Like, okay, I probably should have been listening to this more. You know what I'm saying? You can take Nas, Nas. Some yeah, people go, Nas some, is lyrically some people gonna say Nas rap better. I'm a Nas fan yeah, too. Right. Yeah. And that's a debate that, that, that work, you can though. never be wrong or right. 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 You know what I'm saying? But bodies of work, though, I don't think Nas is match up to Jay-Z. Thank you. That's how I No, nah, they don't. Thank they you. don't match up. Like, like, bodies of work don't match up. Like, the the one person that right now has the potential to end with his catalog being like that, what Miles was, was, was talking Kendrick. about, we'll see what he does from this. Okay, exactly. okay. He can do that. Kendrick then gave us three classics. Three classics. As far as back, the back, listen, the back, as, yeah. far, as far as official albums now, right. we got we got Dan being the last one to Pippa Butterfly right. before that. Good kid, and he started with Good Kid Mad City. All Good Kid Mad City was crazy when it Come came on, out. Dog. Ridiculous. Crazy. Good Kid Mad City as a solo. And if yeah. you listen, if you want to be technical, yeah. His mixtape before that, Section right. 80. Yo, Section right. 80 was ridiculous. Section too. 80 that's, that's was better than a lot of people's albums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's facts. That's facts. That's facts. So Kendrick then got three classics in here. Depending on where he goes from here, Kendrick can give us four. And, and I mean, he's taking his time for a reason. Yeah, what is he doing now that he's not dropping an album? He gonna, he's about to, I think he's dropping this year. I think he's, he's going to drop I'm pretty sure I think he's going to drop this year. I had, saw some, I had saw a picture leak that said that like the whole TV, he was working on a company or something. Which would be good too, but we don't know. I want, I want like, the, I want, I want the compilation, but I want the Kendrick by I'm itself. Sure, sure. I want the Kendrick because I, I feel like, I, I feel like the you. climate, the climate of like just the West Coast yeah. artists right now was at, as at a height right now. Like, yeah. like I, I would like to see just to throw some names out there. I feel like when he drops his project, Nip gonna be on there. Obviously, I feel like wow. I feel, I feel like Nip Man, gonna be. I feel, think Kendrick's a on Nipsey verse. I feel like Nipsey has Probably a verse with him, bro. I like, I, I feel before. like because because he was on. Think, think about it on Victory Lap. He he gave he gave Nip a verse. So I think Nip gave him. Oh, they probably have a couple songs, you know. And man. then I feel, yeah, God bless them. Got a couple songs. LA last week, I rolled, I rolled, I rolled down Sloshin and Crenshaw, man. And it's just like you feel the spirit. You yeah, know, like, bro. All, that, all that's gated off. Mm-hmm. But it's like as soon as you ride down within, like I say, within like um, four to five blocks up to four to five blocks past it, and even even yeah. past that, all you see is net murals. Yeah. I'm like, sure. Yeah. You just see how like another icon. He was an icon out it's there. It's like that that the presence of that strip mall that him and his brother or whoever else owned. Yeah. Like resonates through that whole like area. Fast. He changed he changed, he changed he changed the landscape right. of the way that whole area was presented and thought about. Yo. You feel me? And then um, So I got one more whole question hold for on, you. Hold on, before before we go into that. And then another artist I want to see Nick do, because I'm big on Roddy Rich right now. 
Like I want to see. I think. I think. I, him, I, I like his album a lot. Like Roddy like Rich. Roddy Rich. I like his album and he's a, a young boy. He don't like not even my certain type of rap. But yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I like it a lot. Just like we was talk. Just like we was talking about with this generational. Yeah. Thing. I can look at him and like notice the talent. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, oh, he's definitely talented. And, and Roddy and Roddy put a Roddy put a pic, a picture. I don't pictures don't mean much, but he was in the studio. He said he got a. He claims he has a verse from Kendrick. So I'm gonna, I, I want to see if it was gonna be on the project or not. Just because you know Kendrick, he knows how to tap into each generation for me to whatever. Wait, he said he got a what verse. He, I think he has a verse from I think he has a verse from Kendrick. Roddy and Kendrick, I think, have a song together because he put I a picture it. of them in the studio together. It. So I'm like, I believe. Well, they definitely it. got a song together. Me? Man. I definitely believe it. And then, but yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm getting Rich the Kid a verse. I mean, I'm sorry, Kendrick gave Rich the Kid a verse. Yeah, he gave Roddy. He gave Roddy. He got to give Roddy a verse. And but yeah, him. And then another another impactful artist. I want to see. I want to see. Um, I want to see Kendrick do a project with his Meek. That's another one because Meek's my favorite artist. That's my favorite. You know, um, you know, Nip and, and Meek was supposed to do a project. Yep, yep. I was I was waiting for that, and then Nip got killed, bro. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. It's some yeah. stuff that, that we was never also crazy. It was on a Sunday too. I think you know Meek said they had like like four or five songs together, something like that. I don't know, but they definitely started some sessions. Yeah, yeah. They got some, but that's the one person that definitely got that sitting on some Nip verses is me. And it's just crazy to think about how think about the climate la- last year. Victory Lap was out. I'm saying it was right after the Grammys. Right after the Grammys, Nip, Nip was at the Grammys last year. And the Grammys is tonight. That's yeah. the, the, the um the hip hop the hip hop album of the year category was uh rap album of the year the rap album of the year was I think it was Travis Scott yep Cardi Cardi yeah. Pusha and Nip Nip and somebody else uh huh damn that's crazy bro I was out because Cardi won last you had the Grammys last year I, I wasn't there I okay was you was cutting in LA I had to cut one of my I had a client that was going to the Grammys so I was out there during that time that's what's up. But how was that experience? Oh, amazing, man! Um, again, shout out to my man DJ. I was out there with him. He uh, he actually was nominated with with her. Mm-hmm. They had one. Um, I think it was R and B album, maybe female R and B album of the year or something like that. I mean, so we just if I can just tell y'all about that time real quick. We uh, yeah, we literally was in the hills. <laughs> he was at B and B. I got him ready for the Grammys. Um. I had a, I had one of my own girls was was nominated with Hov and B for their accomplished album. So she had one with them. My man DJ that I was with, he won with her. And um the Morris who I mentioned earlier, they had one for an R and B artist they were singing with at the time for his live album. So and that day, I had D, uh, my my man DJ all was talking about his cut was on TV, and I was after the Sitches made all the trades that year. Yeah, right. I had um. I had cut Mike Scott the yep. night before I left the wow. LA. Wow. When Mike Scott got traded from, from the Clippers to Philly, I had mm. cut him the night before I left for LA. Mm. So that, that Sunday I had two cuts nationally televised. And then all my homies that was involved in the Grammys had had brought home, you know what I'm saying? Uh we it was something to celebrate before they all had one. So that literally, and we was we was in the hills, we we partied that night. What an experience. Somebody you know, know. that's the what that's an so, experience. It was just like Legit, like black celebratory excellence. Yeah, man. that's major, bro. Uh, that's that's major. A lot of this that night. <laughs> <laughs> that's major, bro. Time, that's man. that's so, major, bro. It was great time. So it was like that was a good moment, you know. And um, that was that. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, we had a good time. That's good. That's you great. Know? That's great to hear. Great accomplishments. I'm saying growth. We all about growth. All about supporting. Like you said, black excellence. And it's just it's just good to see that you're doing well. Yeah, but you got your own shop, bro. I mean, being in here, being at the old shop to being here now, we've seen your growth throughout the years, and it's crazy to see. You got your own spot now, you know what I'm saying? Right. Really, black businessman. Black business you know owner, I mean? bro. It's like That's what's up, you know what I mean? We proud of you, dog, no doubt. It, it, in, in, no the, doubt in the man. echoes, it's like you hear it from us, but people, people that you probably don't even know talk about they know what cold when you say you got a cold cut. Yeah. They know what it is. That's all like, you gotta say. They know what it. They know what it cut. is. But it's, it's, they it's, already know who you are. It's it's crazy, bro. It's just like I, I said. You seeing you building everything from the ground up is is amazing. It's a blessing. Yeah. And, and see that you're still winning. We miss you. We wish you like many more blessings. Yeah. Before we get off air though, I gotta I gotta ask you one question. Sure. Who you got in the Super Bowl, bro? Do you got the Chiefs or the or the, or the uh, Niners? Uh, I'm a Tennessee Titans fan, so I don't, I don't really want to say I'm going with the Chiefs because they got us up out of here, but we wouldn't need to make it that far. Yeah, so yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, 
my dad is a big my dad is a big San Francisco fan, so I'm gonna mm-hmm. go with them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna okay. rock with Okay, 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 okay. Shannon, Shannon, know who I'm rocking with. You I know you're rocking with the Chiefs. Chiefs fan. I'm a Chiefs. What you say? I'm bench. Yep. I know that for forever. <laughs> I was for you rocking with Eagles. He's Eagles. Fan. I mean, I'm not just squad. <laughs> oh, I'm rocking with um. I'm gonna go with San Fran. Okay. Y'all, 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 that's only, how because, it, only because, only <laughs> because, only because I feel like they have a better defense. Okay, than the defense, the defense. That's the only yeah, reason yeah, I'm yeah. picking them. But Patty going. That's the only reason I'm picking them. Some Patrick Mahomes gonna do some dirty to them. I'm, I'm excited to see him. Yeah, in the yeah, against that San Fran defense. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a game. Sherman against Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey. It's gonna be a lot of talking going on out there. Yeah, bro. What up, love? <laughs> well, wait, I got one more question for you, so, Cole, because I'm a Jay-Z fan like you are. Okay, let's go. We What's your, this all day. your favorite Jay-Z album? You had to pick one that you got to listen to. You got to pick uh, one you can't album. pick one, rank them then. <clears throat> this, is a hard, this is a hard question. This is just as hard as, like, favorite Kanye album for me. Wait, 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 before that, did you think the last album was fire? The four for four. Four for four yeah, from Jay, right? I thought it was from top to bottom. I thought it was a oh. great project of how he... Perfect. Evolved to like what he is now. I thought it was a tremendous project. Um, so what, you want to talk about four four four? You want me? Uh, you go ahead. Me? We can talk about four four four. Yeah. Let me answer the question first. Then we can talk about four four four. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we want to limit or anything? Nah, we can. We, right, we so, here. We here. We here. Right, we here. So we here. first, favorite Jay Z album. All right. Honestly, I really don't know because uh-huh. okay. soon as soon as somebody asks me this, I like on top. I I always say like. uh I always say off top, like literal, literal, l- lyrically, like in his prime. I always thought was Blueprint One. Mm-hmm. I think of like um, you don't know, like I came into this motherfucker hundred grand strong, not to be exact, and brought a G patch. Like that was like so water to a well. Thank you. You know what I mean? That was like the tip of the yeah. So it's like I feel as though like he was just like in the the most. Bag of bags at that moment, so it's like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's a fact. Like, it takes a, take a lot for you to go into a booth and say, like, I came into this motherfucker 100 grand strong, not to be exact, from Brown and G-Pack. Put this shit in motion, ain't, ain't no one wanting me back. back. Can make 40 off a of brick, but what one rock can beat that. He's literally saying, one verse that I spit is Worth more than and the bricks that you saw. A brick of cocaine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Facts. Think about that. Yeah. It's a fact. That's that you ain't here like, nigga. Yeah, you, yeah. you got you got Who fucking with yeah, me? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then as soon as I say that, I think about reasonable doubt. Reasonable doubt like, was like reasonable doubt is kinda like I set it off. <sighs> It's like that said it all. What made him become listen, my favorite? Listen I said that and then think about '96. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you know what, what I'm saying? saying. But then, you, then another debate that that starts is like I ain't mean to cut you off, my fault. Are you good? But another debate that that starts is like um, everybody goes into the debate of reasonable doubt versus Illmatic. So it was like. 94. That's a hard debate, though. That's a hard <laughs> debate because Illmatic you know, was that's fired too. That, listen, that that from '94. To ninety seven, we got Illmatic. Ninety four, we had Illmatic and that's that cool. I don't even remember this right now, bro. That's that cool shit again. All right, anyway, you, let, me, let me try to focus on what I'm talking about. From ninety four, ninety four, we had Illmatic and uh, Ready to Die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In ninety four, jump forward to ninety six. You had Reasonable Doubt. And uh, Nas' second album was um, I forget the name of it. Was I, I am was the third one. The second one was uh, I can't think of the second one. I can't think of it. I'm getting them mixed up right now. Let me I'll look it up for you. Though. Blame it on the Yeah, yeah. But um, <laughs> Nas' second joint, which people debate that it was better than Illmatic. Um, then you fast forward to '97. Was big second joint was was ready to die. Uh, right after he got killed. So you think of that three year span? It's called Is Written. It, it was written. Yeah, yeah it was written. Right. Yeah, there we go. So you think of that 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 two and a half three year span, mm-hmm. you got like four or five of the best bangers, hip hop albums yeah, ever. You know what bangers, I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like debate wise, you can't go wrong with none of them. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But so when you ask me the best Jay Z album, it's like I, like I, like I said, I always thought whole and his lyrical pride throughout his album, in my opinion, was Blueprint One. Mm-hmm. Then I think a reasonable doubt. The blueprint was. And then I think of like. Uh, what do you think about American Gangster? Where do you rank that joint at? Bro, listen, listen. 
American Gangsta is either hit or miss. I've heard some people say, oh, American Gangsta, I don't, I ain't, I don't, I ain't I rock that. with American Gangsta. Some people love it. Is it American Gangsta, there's no middle. You either love it or you hate yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. The unique thing about American Gangsta, because it kind of low key was a, it was like a, the second soundtrack to the movie. Yeah, yeah. They had an American Gangsta soundtrack. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, obviously, that, that album was inspired by the Denzel movie. Um, shout out to Denzel Washington. I'm named after him, my middle name, whatever. But anyway, um, it was like, who else was going to rap over them, them right. 70 soul samples like that? Like, have you actually listened to, to what he did on Party Life? Who can rap that slow? <laughs> and, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm man. Her bro, oh, bro, oh, Jay, so Jay different, bro. Jay is a different that, kind of artist, man. Age, like, who can who and can now he's in mobile status now, you know? Who can mean? flow that slow and, and be that effective? Nobody but who. Mm-hmm. Nobody. <laughs> no doubt. You know what I'm saying? To me, I'll say what made me a Jay-Z fan when I was a young boy was the black album. Cause yeah. that's when my dad had me riding around listening to him. I'm like, yo, what it's is the this? black album? That was like the first <laughs> like Jay-Z, like the whole like that's the first oh, one that I can remember man. hearing from like start to finish. Like, damn. I need to. I need to start listening and that's, to him And that's more. when he was supposedly about to bow out, right? So right. That's, like, and it's crazy to think about that. You talking about him bowing out, and even though he didn't bow, look at where he's at now. It's like he's a mogul. He's a mogul. We just, there, just talking about the Rock Nation yeah. brunch. It's I like the, um, I saw uh, when Puff was giving his speech at the Rock Nation brunch yesterday. Yeah. He said, "Puff said, yo, this is different than 2016.'" Puff looked around. He said, "Obviously, there's more expense happening here." He said, "We had a billionaire's brunch." That's, just just think about that. And think about seeing, seeing where he came from to now. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Puff said we had a billionaire's, billionaire's brunch. brunch. Yeah. They rode in the Maybach there together. He said, yeah, I see, yeah. You see, you see on the story, he said, he said, how you, he says, I feel marvelous. I'm like, he said, <laughs> I said, I've been, marvelous. Uh, I've been quoting that all day, dog. Marvelous. Everybody can call this suit big. Okay. Jason, and he corrected boy though. Jason, yo, this is mall. Yeah, <laughs> this is mall. This is mall. I didn't knock my mic down. It's all good, but he said, yeah, yo, this is mall. But um, but that's that's a, that's a moment, man. You know what I'm saying. But nah, Cole, man, it was a pleasure having you on air, man. It was a pleasure. Being it, it was a pleasure having man. you on air and, and having yeah, a discussion with you. There's a lot of gems you dropped off. A lot of people can gain a lot from from what you was talking about and um, just learn a lot from from your come up. You feel me? And this. And it's something that we, yet, yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah big it's, things it's coming. Still a process, but I'm bigger saying, things coming. What you've done so far can is like, can we do this again one day? Of oh, course, yeah. we can. We can. We can do this like whenever, yeah, whenever you want to do this again. You feel me? We can see. We can oh, see. Whenever y'all invite me, whenever. Y'all got you, you feel me? Yo, we literally talked about this like day one. Day like, one when we, we get cold look, on look, look, look. The day one we started, we sat, we sat in the. What was the name of the shop we was in? Tiki 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 Games. We was doing a whole, we was doing a whole script of how we want to understand. We're like, who who the people you want to bring on? Ever said Cole? Yeah. Yeah, Every you need it cold because it's like that's why I love like, y'all. You feel you've me? Been a, you've been a you've been an inspiration for us since we was young boys. You know that's what, what I'm saying. saying. I y'all. And like I said, now seeing where you're at now, getting your own shot, we ain't got no excuse to not go out there and get it. Bro, you know what I'm saying? Man. Listen, we can all do it. When I say I'm proud of y'all, man, I literally mean that. Like I've been cutting y'all since y'all was young. Young you know boys. I remember this young boy here. Volley the back. Camera man. I I grew up. I I was born close in age with his brother and his sister, but yeah. I remember when. He was a pup right yeah. there. Yeah. He was always crying when he was a young boy. I was like, why young boy crying all the time? You know what I'm saying? All right, let's see why he cut him when he was a youngest. So yeah. it was like, literally see y'all just squat up and say, yo, we got this idea. We're going to run with this together, man. Yeah. I love this, dog. Like, seriously, man. And got you, man. Whatever, even if it ain't just sitting down and talking with it all, but whatever y'all feel that I can help with or yeah. assist with, yeah. Yeah. I got y'all, we appreciate man. That, like, appreciate that, bro. appreciate it, man. Y'all, Really, my youngest, and I'm proud of y'all, man. So whatever y'all feel as though, you know, what I'm saying I'm, I'm a few years older than y'all. Yeah. So whatever y'all feel as though, y'all old head Cole can assist with. Yeah. <laughs> we man. appreciate that. I mean, no doubt. No. Appreciate that, yo, Cole. Tell me where they can find you on social media, man. Social media, Cole Cuts, K O L B underscore K U T Z. Uh huh. On Facebook. What's my Facebook? I don't even be on. What? Kobe Walker. Kobe D Walker. Yeah. Um, and that's it. You know. Yeah. Where's, where's the location of your um your shop, Symmetry, man? Symmetry Unisex Hair Studio, 1406, Kings Highway, Swedesboro, New Jersey. That's right, baby. We're here. South Jersey. Pretty South Jersey. Every day. Yep. Just come in, holla ass. I don't care if you come in and say hi, come say what's up. And that's it. Bad, bad, bad. Right. Man, that's the Face of the Future podcast, man. Um, you can find You can follow yeah, us on sure. Face of the Future pod um, on Instagram. Follow um, MBT 
on MBT underscore the one percent on Instagram, MBT the future on Twitter, man. Um, tell us what you want to hear, man. We, we enjoy listeners. We're on many streaming platforms: Audio Max, Spotify, Apple Music. Uh, this is gonna be on YouTube, so hit us up. Tell us what uh, you want to discuss about. And I appreciate you guys listening, man. The episode eighteen, we'll be at you, man. That's it. Hey, five, hey, five, hey five, appreciate five. the love, Cole. Yo, yeah, rest in heaven, Kobe.